G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you again from the Learn to Paint Academy. This week we're going to try and uh, look at a landscape which is from a photo that I took in Cafferty Valley in New South Wales. Uh, but we're going to really focus in on creating a whole lot of separation um, with the foreground little hill and, uh, and then pushing back into the mountain range behind that with the escarpment and so on up on the, uh, the mountain there. So uh, it should be a fun painting, but a really good exercise in learning about aerial perspective, which is something we all need to learn in uh, landscape painting. Let's have a look at the photo. So as you can see here, it's a really simple photo. There's not a lot to it. Um, in, you know, you could say it's a bit of a boring photo. So it's also gonna be an exercise in how do you create an interesting painting when you haven't got much to work with. Okay, so we'll look at that. Um, but what we will do is we're going to move that large tree over into the right hand third of the painting. Uh, and I, in its place, I might put a smaller tree. And I'm going to extend that distant um, mountain range there. You can see there's a little bit of escarpment there. There's an overcast day, so we're going to brighten it up. And we're just going to move that mountain range over a little bit as well. So we're just going to move things around and use our artistic license, um, which is part of the fun, of course, of being an artist. So let's go down to the palette. Okay, now as always, we're going to use the more method of painting, which is uh, a process that I've taught to 35,000 students now around the world through the Learn to Paint Academy. And it's a process of simplifying things right down. Three steps, three brushes, three colors. So let's have a look at that. These are the brushes I'm going to use. Um, I haven't cleaned these properly, um, but that's fine. I'll give them a swish in water. And they're basically flat brushes. I've got a, a large, a medium, and a small, though we probably will hardly use the small flat brush. Uh, they're flat, they're synthetic hairs, they've got a nice long handle, and that's what I do 80% of my painting with. Um, you know, really, that, that does all the heavy lifting for me. Uh, I also have a script line of brush, which we will use occasionally for, you know, branches and things like that, fence posts, um, but, you know, not a lot. And then you need a palette knife or two. Um, that's pretty much all you need. I'm going to paint today with water mixable oils. So I've, my basic palette, which I'm going to do 80 to 90% of the painting with, is French ultramarine blue, uh, a lizard and crimson, and yellow ochre. A blue, a red, and a yellow. And you'll see me do 80% of this painting at least with those three colors. Now I add a couple of booster colors just to liven it up a bit at the end. Uh, cadmium yellow light or lemon yellow, and phthalo green. And of course, titanium white is important. So as I said, friends, we're going to use the more method of painting, um, a really simple process to follow, just three steps. So let's get underway with step one. Now in step one, our job is to identify big shapes that we need to place on the canvas and get them mapped in in the right spot on the canvas. I'm using a 12 inch by 16 inch um, canvas tape to the backboard here today. Um, so you want to try and keep it around about that size. An eight by 10 would work as well. Or if you want to blow it up bigger, a 16 by 20. So let's get underway with step one, our drawing step. Okay, now in step one, our objective is just to map in big shapes. And when I look at the photo, I can see that there's basically um, not a lot of big shapes. There's this foreground hill here, this foreground grass area. That's one big shape. There's the distant uh, mountainside with the escarpment. That's the second big shape. There's a, a further distant little hill there, which we can put that in. So call that the third big shape, the sky becomes the fourth big shape, and that tree becomes the fifth big shape. Okay, and as I said, I'm gonna move that over to the right-hand side. So with only five big shapes, it should be fairly easy, as to, fairly easy for us to plot this out. Okay, so I'm, what I always do is start off with mixing up a dark. I've got my little thin brush for the purpose of drawing. Um, so I mix up our blue and our red. And because I'm using water mixable oils, I wanna keep this paint fairly thin. I don't want thick paint at this early stage. So I'll get some more water on the brush and we'll just loosen that paint right up. You can see there, it's starting to get a little bit runny, a little bit like um, an ink-like consistency. And so our job here is just to uh, start to map in the big shapes. So this foreground hill, I think, is going to just rise up uh, like so. Not too much, but a little, okay? Maybe a bit more like that. Uh, there is a path which runs from here and it runs kind of into there like that, which means it runs to there and then it runs up there and then it runs back out that way. Okay. 
don't worry about the path too much at this stage. Uh, and then we've got this um, background hill here. Now, the Kapiti Valley region is quite dramatic um, in its um, sandstone escarpment. So we're going to put in some escarpment uh, with some sunlight hitting on that. So I'm going to make it a, a more of a, a warmer day, more blue skies than what's in the actual photo itself. And we'll run that down to there. Just we need to run the land up a little bit more, like so. All that what we could do is just put some bushes there if we need to. And there is a another little hillside there, so we'll just pop in something for that. Now this big tree, uh, it's currently in the photo, sitting right here. I don't like it there, and uh, we're going to move it. Before we do that, we'll just get in some bushes that it falls sort of just over just over the rise there. Okay, so we'll just get in a few there. And maybe there's one there. Okay, so it's really just about finding the right composition by putting your placement in of your big shapes. If you get that part right, then you're so far down the track of having a good painting. If you can make your big shapes work as a composition, um, then you know everything becomes easier. So this tree here sort of sits around about there. So I'm going to lose a lot of that background mountain. But what we might do is we might just run this as a nice big shadow down, down this hill and just over that path. I think that'll work well. Okay. So we just run this tree trunk in here. Another part that comes out like so. Not, I'm not going to get too detailed with this tree just yet. Um, we'll make it a wider one to there. And the reason why I'm not going to get detailed is because it's not the stage that we're up to yet. Okay, so we'll just put in some indications of some foliage of where that might go. And that's all we need to do right now. Okay, we'll connect it up with branches and things a bit later on. Um, but try don't make this a lollipop. See, I've got an unevenly distributed. I've got this clump of foliage here, and I've got a little clump there, and I've got a clump here, but I don't have a repeating one here, so we're not getting this lollipop effect. Okay, really important. So a big old gum tree there, and um, there's a row of fences that run sort of right through here, so we can pop those in as well. That'll make a nice little uh, effect. All right, well, friends, that's pretty much step one of the more method of painting as you can see pretty easy all we've done is identified a few big shapes this foreground area here that's one this mountain here which i've exaggerated and i've made it longer that way that's number two the background row of mountains number three sky number four and then this tree becomes number five so the more you can group big shapes together um, the easier your job becomes uh, once we get moving into this painting, right? So getting that initial design is so important. So I'd, I'd urge you to slow down and, uh, and just really study your big shapes. Get that horizon line in the right spot and um, it'll make your painting process so much easier. So now we're going to go on to step number two. And that's all about blocking in. We just want to get some colour down on here now. Uh, we don't want to paint the painting, but we want to get the right colour and the right values established. So, um, you know, in creating your own perspective. So there's a number of elements to that which I'll talk you through as we go. Our first step is to identify our darkest dark, which is going to be this foreground tree. So the darkest object in this painting is this foreground tree here, okay, including all the foliage and everything. Anything vertical is going to be your darkest darks in a painting, in a landscape. So we've got the next darkest will be these clumps of bushes along here, okay, we've popped a few of those in there. And then after our vertical elements, the next darkest things are going to be um, anything on a slant, like a mountainside. Okay, so that's mountains are on a slant. So they'll become our next darkest items. Then this foreground area will be the next. And then the sky being the source of all light will be our lightest element. So now we need to switch to a big brush. I'm going to switch down here to uh, my large brush here. We need to mix up a nice solid dark which is very similar to what we use just for drawing. So I get lots of the blue, ultramarine blue, lots of the alizarin crimson, and some of this yellow 
ochre and we're mixing up there what we call a chromatic black okay it's not a pure black um, this is what, what's known as a chromatic black mixed from three primaries but keep that paint thin okay don't want thick paint at this early stage doesn't matter if you're using acrylics and, and by the way if you're using acrylics exactly the same process okay so don't be uh, concerned that I'm using water mixed oils you would do exactly the same uh, steps here so we'll run that shadow through there and we'll pop it over the over the uh, path there a little whether we keep it there or not remains to be seen although it does create for an interesting sort of shape there so we'll get this base of this tree in here okay and then I'm just going to get this foliage in here and really all I'm doing here is painting in the shadow side of um, the tree our subject okay so we're not painting leaves and branches and things at this stage just painting in masses of tone the more you can think about it you're painting in that way, the easier it becomes. Okay, leave some plenty of sky to come through uh, the shape here, but also join masses up as well. Okay, so an interesting shape. I, I think that will work. So we'll continue up the uh, tree trunk up in here. Okay, now the bushes that are on the sort of the ridge there, we need to get those in, but they're going to be just that little bit further away. So I'll just go slightly more blue into it to cool it down and we'll get a touch of white into it and the white will just lighten it off. Now see as I add white in, you can see oh, it's quite purple. We don't want it that purple, so we'll get some yellow in the purple is a secondary color it's a mixture of red and blue and uh, by adding the third primary the yellow we can neutralize it a bit that's a much better tone there now um, so if you don't understand that then I highly recommend our color mixing course at the learn to paint Academy so what we should see is uh, a little bit of a distinction between this tone and that one there okay it's very subtle may not be coming across on the video um, but you'll see it as we progress this painting even further. So I'll just pop in some foliage on on that ridge line there. Some trees that may be there actually over the hill because there's a big valley in, in here. This, this road sort of drops down on the other side. Okay. So if that, that being the case, we want to have a big jump from here back to there. This is going to be a bluey grey. So the way we get to a bluey grey is we just add more blue to that previous mix. It's already grey, okay? But then we want to lighten it as well. Lighten the value. Okay, and that will enable us to make it look further away into the distance. Okay. But we don't want just pure blue and white into that mix. We need, to have a, we need to have a little bit of the red, a little bit of the yellow. And again, I'm going to stress, keep that paint thin. I've just dipped into the water there. Again, so even if you're using acrylics, same thing, dip it into the water just a little bit so that it becomes a little bit on the runny side. Okay? And then we test that and we go, okay, is that, is that light enough to be able to create a definite jump and distinction? And my test says, no, it's not. It's too dark. Even though on the palette it looks a lot lighter, uh, but that's one of the dis, you know, difficult things I find when you mix colour on the palette. It, it looks different to how it looks when you put it up on the canvas. And the reason for that is everything's relative. Okay? We've got nothing to compare it to down here on the, on the palette. So just get a little bit more blue into that. So let's do another test. No problem with putting the test mark over that one. I'll put it next to that one. Now you can see there's a, there's a shift still not quite light enough so we get a little bit more white so i'm creeping up on it rather than jumping in too quickly okay let's do a third test there we go that's what we want okay 
that tone there. So it's a light bluey gray. Okay, just run that ridge through there. And then I can paint out those. There we go. So just get the paint down, get a nice coating of it. Don't worry about details at this stage. Details come at the end of a, of a painting. Big shapes and masses are what you want to start with. Okay, so you always keep that in mind. Your, and so when you're doing big shapes and masses, that means you want to have big brushes. No point mucking around with small brushes at this point. Okay, it's working well. I'll just change the angle of that drop off there. Make it slightly more dramatic. Now you can already see that there's aerial perspective happening. There's depth starting to happen. These trees all look like they're closer to us than that mountain range there. So if you get that effect, then you're on the right track. Now we're gonna lighten that mix i'm going to add more blue to it cool it back a bit a little touch of water and then let's come in here and perhaps just a touch lighter I was going to just raise that little ridge of that distant mountain just there. So I'm making quite a few compositional changes. Um, apart from the farmer who owns this land, most people won't know that I've moved that tree up a little bit. And um, it, you know, when they're looking at the painting, they're not going to take this painting down to Capity Valley and try and find the spot. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I've got blue on that brush. I'm going to give it a swish around, give it a bit of a dry off with paper towel. I'm going to change the tone now um, for the foreground. We're going to do an underpainting for the foreground grasses. Okay, now they're fairly yellowy green, um, but what we want to do is get just an underpainting here first. So I'm going to do that in an orange, an earthy orange tone. Part of the reason I'm going to do it in an earthy orange tone, I'm just mixing the red and the yellow, is that that reddy orange tone you can see there um, that that will make a really nice underpainting for our greener grasses um, and what will happen is our greens will become more vibrant sitting over the top of of um, that ready tone okay so I'm going to just start off with that mix here down below because what we have to do is create a little bit of a gradient so don't use the stronger tone close to the bottom. Um, sorry, don't use the stronger tone at the back of the field. Use it close to the bottom here as, as you see me doing. Okay. All right, now, as we move back, what we want to do is just add a little bit of white to that mix. And just a pinhead of the blue, because what the blue will do is start to mute the color off so it's not so vibrant. Okay. So you can see there, there's a shift in the tone. It doesn't have to be a perfect gradient back, but a gradient will definitely help. Bring that in there. 
make that sweep of the road. Now I've gone over my line and lost my line a little bit. Don't worry if that happens because we haven't put the path in yet. We'll get to that in the next step and we can re-establish any of those lines that we need to. In fact, I would suggest you're better off being a little bit messy like I am than being too neat. So whatever you do, don't try and paint perfectly up to your lines because you know what'll happen? It'll look like everything's been cut out of paper neatly and then just paste it on. All right, friends, well, that's the end of step two of the more method of painting. I block him definitely on track. This painting's starting to come together nicely. It's already getting a feel of depth. These warmer tones in the foreground bring the foreground forward. The cooler, bluer tones in the background send it into the background, okay? So warm colors come forward cool colors go backwards always keep that in mind we're on track now what I want to do now is just leave this for half an hour to an hour and especially if you're using acrylic you want to let this be completely dry um, but even with oils you know like I'm using water mix of oils if I leave it for an hour the water I've used to thin the paint that'll fully dry off and then we'll be good to go to come back in and work back over it in step three so I'm gonna go take a cup of break and I'll see you again shortly Okay, welcome back friends. We're now going to do step three of the more method of painting and start to really develop this little painting out and uh, You'll see it all come to life in this step. So let's go down to our palette cam and get ourselves underway So this is dried off reasonably well. It's still a little bit wet here and there, but that's fine If, it's, if you're using acrylics, make sure you're fully dry, but with oils it can be a little bit tacky and that that will work fine so what I think we need to do is just develop this tree up a bit, um, get a little bit more work into the trunks and branches, and establish the uh, more greener mid-tones uh, in this foliage here. So let's get that underway. Now, with the tree trunk, we're going to leave it dark on this side, in the shadow side. So we'll just get into the middle area there. We'll get more of a browny sort of tree tone. So we'll do that with some... Uh, ultramarine blue there, some alizarin crimson and yellow ochre. Okay, but this time we're going to push it more to the brown side. And um, the way we do that is we're mixing our three primaries, but we just lean it more towards the orange. But because I've got the little bit of um, blue in there, it'll make it more brown than orange, as you can see there. So we'll just use that as a little bit of a mid tone. Let's just test that. It's still fairly dark. We could lighten it slightly, but we want to have a semi sort of um, silhouetted tree shape because that will then help us get more of a, an effective light coming through here. But you can see there, we've got a little bit lighter there. We'll just run that in. Now, don't lose all that dark we've already put in because, um, you know, it's, you, the darks are important and useful to creating form. And in fact, we'll strengthen up some of that dark in just a moment. Okay. So I'm using this paint thicker now than what we did with the blocking. And I'm using just a little touch of this fast drying medium that comes with uh, the Cobra brand of water mixable oils. Um, I'll pop on the palette cam there for you. It's a, it's a good little medium for water mixable oils. Not necessary, but uh, it does give a nice sort of glossy finish at the end, which I like. Okay, I'll just mix up the dark side of that tree again. Okay, and we'll just come in here and we'll just strengthen up some of those darks in there. So this is the shadow side clearly in here. So it's important that we um, indicate the shadow. If you want to get a good effect of light into your painting you need to have your darks and what I find with a lot of people starting out with painting is that they start following my method with putting in their darks but then when they start doing their mid-tones and highlights they invariably just go and paint the darks out paint over them which happens be mindful of it. Okay. Just putting a little bit of a knobbly part there on the side of that tree. Okay, that's about all we need to do. Let's give that brush a little bit of a clean. And I'm cleaning it just by swishing it in some water and using a piece of paper towel just to give it a bit of dry. You can see there, I'm just 
I'm not going to fully clone it, but just enough. Let's now get a middle value green. Okay, go for the foliage of that tree. Just the French ultramarine blue and the yellow ochre. Pinhead of the red in there. Okay. Push it slightly more to the yellow side. And notice I'm not using my two booster colors just yet. We'll save those for the very end. Um, we'll dip into my oil, get a little bit of oil in there. Okay. Now, I don't want to lose all of the darks that I've got in this foliage. That, 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 those darks are important, especially on this side here. The light's coming in through there, hence the shadow. So don't lose the underneath there of the um, of your foliage. Get that shadow working for you. Okay. See how I'm leaving little bits of it there? Very important. Okay, so this is just a middle value. It's not our highlight yet. To create form, we need really the values, um, you know, mid-tone. Um, yep. We've got a, a tone established on the palette here, but what I'll do is I'll add just a little touch more yellow and a little touch white. I want to shift it. It doesn't want to be as strong or as dark. It wants to be slightly lighter in value. And then let's just come in here, just using the edge of the brush there. I'm just scrubbing that on. And again, I don't want to lose all that dark. I just want to keep plenty of that dark there. Just create the feel of some clumps of foliage. Don't, whatever you do, don't try and paint trees. <laughs> What I mean by that is, don't try and paint in leaves and things. I'm just scrubbing the brush. Just let the brush do the work. It's just an illusion of foliage there that we want at this stage. Okay, It's not actual... You know, we're not trying to create a representation of the foliage as such. We're just an indication of it really do a couple of things here. We need to get some of the escarpment in, in a few spots along here, and maybe just a little feel of foliage in there as well. Let's do the foliage first. Most important thing about getting the foliage tone right for these, uh, I don't even know if we'll worry about that one, but for this one here, to get the foliage tone right, we must get back to that original tone. So it's always a good idea to mix more paint than what you think you need. And to leave that mix and then keep working along the palette so I can go back to that mix. Okay, So I know, because I'm using a limited palette, that that foliage mix was mostly blue, a pinhead of the red and a pinhead of the yellow, and a fair bit of white to tone it back. Okay, So my first step, go back and find that tone. Okay, So that's not quite it. Close in value, but it's well, that's who, it's probably not that close in value. It needs to go a bit lighter. But what it needs is a pinhead more red in there. Let's try that. Just a, I've got it a little touch more purple here on there, but you know what? I think we could probably just work that in and that'll be okay. Just establish that ridge line there a bit more. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put some really subtle indications of foliage in here. It definitely doesn't want to be as strong as the foliage here or the tree. Definitely not. So I've got my mix. And what we're going to do is take a chunk of white and lighten it. Okay. And then we want to warm it slightly with a little bit of yellow ochre. Like so. So that should be really close the mark there. Let's just try some of it. See that? It's very close to the what I've already got painted up there. It's because I started with that as a base. And um, I can now just start to come in here and just indicate some, really what we'd be indicating is just ridge lines of foliage there. But without any real detail at all. Pop 
some up along there. Break out that line with some trees. And just run some of that down. So really what that is, is just rows of trees that are catching a little bit of light and it's just creating a bit of a highlight effect on there. You can do it a little bit haphazardly as well. But you know, again, I'm not painting out that shadow underpainting. That's really important. So it's just a little indication that there's things going on there. Now let's get into that escarpment. This is always the fun part. It's where we bring out our palette knife. You could do this with a brush. I find a palette knife infinitely better. So we get our white and we get our yellow ochre. Now notice I put it next to, right, rather than in. We get a chunk of the red there as well. And then let's just bring it together and start to work up a tone here. something like that tone there so I'm just moving paint around until I felt like okay that's probably what we want and I probably need more white into it just to tone it back that's about it there now don't over mix it see how I've got broken color in there that's what we want now I'm going to take the key to using a palette knife is when I've got paint all over it Whatever's on the palette knife or the brush is going to end up on our painting surface. So I start with a clean palette knife after I've mixed it. Then I come to this mix here. And I just use the edge, the blade, pop it there, and just cut a wedge like that. Okay, so now I've got, I know what I've got on my knife, and I can control this part of the process. Because I want to create these rock faces in here. Okay, uh, but we don't want to work it to death. We want to keep it nice and fresh which means basically we're you know, going to get one pass at it, really. Um, so these are the rock faces, exposed rock faces that are going to be catching sunlight here. So we just pop the knife down and we just drag it down just nice and gently because we want that paint to just to break off like that. Okay. And we start to get the effect of sunlight catching on those rocky um, escarpments. And this becomes you know, the highlight of the painting, what people are going to be what's going to draw people's attention to it. And once I've put some down, it's very important that we don't go back and rework it. <laughs> okay? Because you'll lose that knife broken effect. And I, look, I'm telling you that from experience. I've reworked plenty. And it never works out as well as what we imagine it will be when we go back into it. I'm going to go back to my big brush. I don't want to muck around here and detail every blade of grass. We just want to get in big areas here. Okay, At the back, less detail, less brushwork. As we get into the foreground here, you want to put in more detail and brushwork. Okay. So that's just simple principles of, um, of aerial perspective. So white, yellow ochre, a little dab of the Phthalo green, you can see that there. And that's kind of the tone I was hoping for, a greeny yellow. But notice I haven't over mixed it. So um, we've got some broken color in there, which is perfect. Take a little bit of the um, oil in there. And let's just test this here. Okay, could that be a bit lighter? I think that could work like that. Just means we have to get a little bit stronger in tone and value as we come forward. Okay. I might get a touch more yellow ochre into it. taking my time here because we're doing step three here it is the time where we do slow down 
in our blocking we can do fairly quickly but as we get into this bringing the painting to life step it's important that we be a little bit more measured in our approach so you will see that i am thinking about my brush marks more and so on now see there is some of that underpainting coming through a couple little clips of it here and there that's really important to leave don't don't try and paint that out um, i think that kind of makes the field otherwise you can have a big area of not much interest okay. starting to get there friends a bit more yellow ochre let's pop a little touch of red into it as well because what we want to do is start to warm up our grass as we come forward and I'll get a little bit more expressive with my brushwork here we can get a little bit of this cadmium yellow light into it see that much more green in there now and I'll get a bit more movement into there rather than keeping it boring okay and as I come down to this corner I'm going to darken it off So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take some blue in there, a bit more of that yellow ochre, a little touch of the red. Now why am I darkening it off? Just really as a way of just quietening that corner down in here. Okay, So it's still a green, but I don't want this corner to really command any interest really. Um, sort of quieten that down. I can come back in and put some more punchy highlights and some of the grass there but we'll just treat this area as sort of being in shadow but not really an important part of the painting if you like okay okay a little touch of the red in there and let's just see how that looks now I'll get into the I'll use a little bit of oil I'll just help that paint flow a little bit better I'm using this synthetic brush the neaf brush large flat brush which will enable me to just work around these edges a bit okay now I just want to touch more red into that. So a little another little pinhead of the red with the mixing knife. Oh, that's a probably a touch more. Oh that's no, okay. That that'll work. Okay, we'll just borrow a bit of that. And we'll just get some of this ooh, a bit more fire there now, isn't there? Um, but I can use now I've got thicker paint than what we used earlier on. So I can use that thick paint now. To really start to shape mountain lines and trees and things. Okay, if I didn't like the shape of that, I could take the opportunity there to um, redo it. Okay. Now this takes a little bit of practice working around the darks of these trees. Um, don't be too concerned if you accidentally paint part of it out. That's not a problem. We'll just come back and pop it back in. Now, see this? I've got this tree bulging out a bit there. I want to just work that back a little. So I'll use my sky just to reduce that bulge. That in. Now we won't carry that all the way across, we'll just a little bit across. Um, so this is really like a late afternoon, sun starting to set on the Capiti Valley. So 
just got to be careful here because of all that tree trunk and everything's all wet. But a little bit of practice. And as you can see, it's very easy to do. And I'm using a big brush. I don't need a um, small brush. I can just use the blade of the brush like so. Okay, so now we'll get into our blue tone, the sky. And we want to keep this a fairly light value, so plenty of white right there. A little bit of blue, see how much I've got there. Mix that in. That's probably a little bit too dark. So easily out of camp, get some more white. Mix that in. I won't mix it in completely because it might pay to have a little bit of dark tone. But yeah, that's the sort of blue we want. Remember, like I'm talking about this being a dusky kind of painting. Okay, so keep the value light for that blue sky. So we'll take some of that slightly darker tone and we'll just add that up into there. Notice I'm not really being careful and painting perfectly, you know, perfect bands of the sky. Um, I think it's better to get a bit of sense of movement into your sky. Unless you're going for an idealistic day. Sky's got to definitely get lighter down the lower down we go. So we might even get a little bit more white into that. So we're not painting clouds here at all, um, but having these this warmer tone will just help this sky feel like it's got a bit more interest. Otherwise. The sky might end up a bit bland, which we don't want. Okay, so I'll just paint up to what we've already done. And then we can connect the two. Paint along that ridge line. Careful of that nice work we've done in the rocky escarpment there. Okay, so we've got that coverage down there. So now we can take some more of that yellow, uh, that warm tone there, that one there. And let's just work some of that up into here. Okay. Keep it soft in there. And then as we come into the part we have painted, we'll just start to now just connect those two areas there. Okay. Just get a bit of, a little bit of a hazy feel, which is perfect. Okay, we'll get a little bit of that blue. We'll just run some of that blue up into there. It's a bit of runaway foliage tone, but that's all right. Okay. Looking good. Now the great thing is because we're using a little bit of palette, we can basically take that sky color. So I'll just lighten it off a little. And I'll add a touch more yellow ochre into it. Okay. Scoop that up with a palette knife and um, let's just try that as a, a dirt road kind of tone. You could use a brush for this. I find because it's a dirt road, uh, the palette knife gives some interesting texture effects. So that's why I often will do dirt roads with a palette knife, but hey, Brush should work just as fine. Let's just soften that shadow in. In fact, I'll take a brush just to get to the smaller part. Uh, what have we got there? That one will do. Okay, so it just disappears about there. So that 
Just really leaves our few little details and our foliage there. You want to get a slightly, um, slightly warmer tone into our foliage. So let's get our lemon yellow into there. Pinhead of the red. Oop, that's too much of the red. And the way I'm loading the brush up, nice chunky amounts of the paint there. And let's just come in here. And this should be you know, lighter and warmer than the middle value tone we put in earlier. And just clip it up into the sky here and there. So that it gets that feel that it's catching, you know, the sun's blasting away in here and catching on the edge of this foliage. Take our script liner brush and just add in a few more. Now, thin paint with a script liner. So I've got a little bit of water in there and we'll just strengthen up some of these branches. Okay, and let's pop a few more in. They don't all have to be the same thickness, so run some in that are, um, that are a bit thinner. This um, brush that I'm using, the script liner brush, it's actually a watercolor, or it's a rigger brush for watercolor. And I like it because it doesn't give you a lot of control. <laughs> so um, it stops you from fussing too much, really. Okay, so um, that's a good thing, I think. Because especially when we're just starting out painting, we want everything to look perfect. So we do tend to fuss a little bit too much. Okay. So, get that fence line in, running around about here, one line there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Don't have to overly detail that up, uh, but what would be good would be just to run in the shadow of those. Gives it even more of an effect of light. And now let's go and add in some highlights. Which, um, we'll just add more white to that. Mix there. Maybe a touch more of the yellow ochre. Warmth there, and a bit more white. Okay, so that's a good highlight tone. So what we'll do is using the script line brush again. And come in here and go, okay. that sunlight here now is catching on um, that tree trunk and the branches Mm. 
ça. Okay, soften that in. So now we've got the dark side of the tree, we've got a middle value, we've got a lighter tone. And um, you know, given more time, we spend more time just really working on the form of that tree. But you can see the three different tones there and how you can uh, start to get a sense of form happening. Well, there you go, folks. Capity Valley with the uh, escarpment there all lit up in the late afternoon sunshine. A fun little landscape painting. Um, hopefully you followed along with the steps. And, um, you know, if, if you have, then you'll be able to produce a nice little painting like this. Take your time with it. You don't have to do it in the same time frame that I've done it. Um, you know, these demonstrations are always a little bit rushed to try and keep them a reasonable time frame for you to watch. Um, but you take your time with yours. Follow the three steps. Keep your palette limited to three colours and use three brushes and um, follow the more method of painting. Now, if you haven't done so already, please come and uh, join us at the Learn to Paint Academy. We're giving away a free course which explains the more method of painting in more detail. And there's four different painting demonstrations just like this one that you can have a go at. Um, and you'll find the link to that on the screen below me here um, or in the description. So please um, come across. The, the web address is learntopaint.info, but you'll see it on the screen. Come and join us at the Learn to Paint Academy. Register for the free course and I'll see you there. And I'll see you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.